So today uh, we started off with Surah Al-Baqarah and all of you know the beginning of Baqarah vaguely in that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins by describing the book and then he categorizes mankind into three categories the believers, the non-believers and the munafiqun. So the, for the believers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this book is meant for the believers. Therefore those who have taqwa, those who have iman, they will be the ones who will benefit the most from this book. Now who are those that have Iman? Who are those that are righteous? Allah describes them. They are those who believe in the ghaib. The ghaib means that which cannot be proven. The ghaib means that which is unseen. The ghaib means that which you don't know. So Allah says there will be elements of this religion that you cannot rationalize. We live at a time when we are being attacked. How do you explain this? How do you explain that? The very first verse Allah says, there is ghaib. Your knowledge is limited and Allah's knowledge is infinite. There must come a point where you simply say, I believe, O oh Allah. Why does Islam say X? Sometimes we can answer. Sometimes I don't know. I'll just have to say Allah knows best. And then there are actions. You have to pray. You have to give charity. You have to believe in the hereafter. So the believer is the one whose heart and soul, body and mind is in the worship of Allah. These people will benefit the most from the Quran. Then Allah says those who don't believe. Those who have rejected. Allah says, It doesn't matter whether you speak or don't speak, they have already decided they're not going to believe. How does Allah describe them? Their hearts are sealed, their ears are sealed, and over their eyes there is a curtain, there is a, a blind. So, this is interesting. Realize, Allah says the non-Muslim, the one who has rejected Islam, they can hear and see. They have the faculty of hearing and seeing. But they have chosen to put wax in it, to cover up their, their eyes. Right? So, if they wanted to, they could see. But they have chosen, and Allah Azawajal has punished them, that they have willfully blinded themselves. Now, with regards to the hypocrites, this is where Allah mentions 13 verses, right? Four verses for the believers, two verses for the kafir, 13 verses for the hypocrites. Who are the hypocrites? The hypocrites are those who pretend to have iman, but they don't have iman. They say they're believers, but they don't act like believers, right? Their tongues say we're Muslim, we're Muslim, but secretly their hearts, their, their actions, they belie the claim to Islam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how does He describe them? Allah says, and you all know these uh, first, these are the first analogies of the Qur'an. Allah gives two examples, two parables, mathal. The first mathal is for the one who asks for some wood to light a fire. So this tells us that he's in darkness, the darkness of kufr, the darkness of his own desires, the darkness of evil. He knows he's in dark. That's why istawqada. Istawqada means he asks for fuel to light a fire, right? So he doesn't have the fuel. He doesn't have the gas. He doesn't have the wood. So what does he do? He gets the wood. Who does he get it from? From the one who has it, i.e. the Muslim. So somebody gives him da'wah. Somebody tells him about Islam. So he realizes he's in darkness. So he gets the fuel. Then what? He lights it. فَلَمَّا أَضَاءَتْ مَا حَوْلَهُ he sees everything around him. So light comes into his life. I.e. He knows Islam. He can see the beauty of Islam. What does he do? The light remains. His eyesight is snatched away. ذَهَبَ اللَّهُ بِسَمْعِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa absarihim. That Allah azza wa takes away their eyes and their ears. I.e. They cannot see anymore even though the light is there. What does this mean? This means the munafiq, unlike the kafir, the kafir, Allah says he can see, but there's, there's a big difference between putting a blindfold around your eyes versus not having eyes, right? There's a big difference between putting wax in your ears versus not having ears to hear, right? The kafir, Allah says, he does have the faculty, but he has chosen to stuff it, to block it. He doesn't want to see the light. The munafiq is worse, why? Because he has seen the light. And Allah, the light has given all of the things. So the, the, the munafiq, 
appreciates Islam. He knows what Islam can do. What can Islam do? It can bring light. And by the way, the motif of light and dark, the parable of light and dark is throughout the whole Quran. From this ayah all the way to the end, that Allah always calls guidance light. He has called the Quran nur. He has called the Prophet ﷺ, nur. He has called Islam nur. And he says that Allah Azza wa Jal himself is nur. Nur al samawati wal ard. Right? So Allah is nur. Allah's religion is nur. Allah's book is nur. Allah's Prophet ﷺ is nur. And the opposite to all of this, shirk. Kufr, sins, disobeying Allah, these are dhulumats. So the munafiq sees the nur. Then what happens? The light remains, but he chooses to become blind. He chooses to become blind. So when he chooses to ignore the light, after having seen the light as a punishment, Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah takes away their light. Why? Because they saw the light and they did not want to act upon it. They saw the beauty of Islam and so they became blind. So Allah says, Summun, bukmun, umyun, fahum la yarji'un. They are deaf, dumb and blind. They don't have the faculties of hearing, seeing and speaking. Unlike the kafir, he has the faculty, right? So in one sense, he's more intelligent, he's more capable. All he's got to do is remove the earplugs. All he's got to do is lift the veil. And when he lifts the veil, he will see Islam. You see the analogy here, right? But the munafiq is much worse. The munafiq, Allah says, he has already seen the light. But he has chosen to ignore it. Once he ignores it, what happens? As a punishment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then makes him blind. That if eyesight did not benefit you, if you chose to neglect the eyesight, why should you have eyes? Why should I bless you with eyes? So Allah takes it away. This is the first example given. The second example. Now this example, the scholars say, is of a second category of hypocrites. So there's two categories of hypocrites that Allah mentions in Baqarah. The first category are the munafiqeen that are khalis with their nifaq. They are pure hypocrites. That these people like Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, right? These people in their hearts, they don't have any iman. And they are the worst. So Allah describes them as being deaf, dumb and blind after having heard, seen and witnessed Islam. So the light is still there. That's what Allah is saying. They have chosen to become blinded. Islam is there, they're blind. The second example this is the example of the hypocrite who is مُذَبْذَبِينَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ Who is إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا ثُمَّ كَفَرُوا ثُمَّ آمَنُوا ثُمَّ كَفَرُوا They go in, they go out. They go in, they go out. They have a little bit of iman and they are vacillating. They are flip-flopping back and forth, right? So they have some bare minimum of iman. Allah mentions this category. How does he mention it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوْ كَصَيِّبِ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ That give them the example of the sayyib is a huge cloud full of rain in the skies. This is Islam, right? So also the analogy of rain being rahmah and rain being Islam is also here. So this is Islam. فِيهِ ظُلُمَاتٌ وَرَعْدٌ وَبَرْقٌ That clouds, they have lots of good. That there's sayyib, there's wabil al-sayyib, there is, there is rain coming. But it could also be harmful. It could give a thunderstorm, right? There could be lightning. So those who don't benefit from the cloud, there will be lightning to harm them. And so the dhulumat and ra'd and barq, the scholars say, these are the punishments in the Qur'an for those who reject the Qur'an. That there is in the cloud that which benefits, rain. When we're in a drought, we want the rain to fall. But there's also potential harm. Some people might be harmed. In this ayah, we learn the hypocrites will be harmed. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that يَجْعَلُونَ أَصَابِعَهُمْ فِي آذَانِ مِنَ الصَّوَاعِقِ حَذَرَ الْمَوْتِ وَاللَّهُ مُحِيطٌ بِالْكَافِرِينَ That when the thunder cracks, so there is thunder, there is lightning, and there is all of this danger that might also happen. The hypocrites are scared at the danger and they ignore the good. They ignore the rain because a sayyib is a beneficial cloud that has rain. Generally speaking, when farmers see the sayyib, they get happy. And they'll overlook the one or two, uh, you know, lightning and whatnot. They'll be happy. The hypocrite doesn't care about the good. 
The hypocrite ignores all the good in the Quran. What is he scared of? Scared of that one lightning that's going to crack, right? And the lightning is the, the 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 metaphor is those verses that are punishments for the hypocrites. Those verses, some scholars say, the lightning is the takalif or the actions of worship that the hypocrite does not want to do. So Allah says, pray. The hypocrite puts his hands in his ears. يَجْعَلُونَ أَصَابِعَهُمْ فِي أَذَانِهِمْ They put their fingers in their ears. We don't want to hear this to pray. Allah says, give zakah, give charity. The hypocrites put their ears and we don't want to. Right? So this is what it is. Allah punishes those who don't do this with adab. They put their ears in that we don't want to hear this. So Allah Azza wa says that they are scared of death. And Allah is muhiyatun bil kafirin. Allah is surrounding the kafir. Allah Azza wa Jal can take the kafir anytime. Now, everyone is scared of death to some point. The Muslim and the kafir. But this, this, the fear is different on both sides. The Muslim has some fear of the unknown. But he also has some optimism and hope that inshallah there's also good there. And fear and hope put together is a sign of iman. The kafir has no hope. The kafir and the munafiq has no sense of good. He simply is terrified of finishing this life. And therefore, Allah Azza wa Jal describes those who don't believe in the Quran that they would like to live a thousand years if they could. They love life so much, they want to live a thousand years if they could. The most greedy thing they have is life. So Allah says the hypocrite is always scared of death. And even if a, a, a lightning, now lightning, how many people does it kill? Very few. But the hypocrite is so terrified, the slightest thing and he gets terrified. Oh my God, what if Allah punished me? What if this, what if that? And he has no iman in Allah. So Allah Azza wa Jal says that يَكَادُ الْبَرْقُ uh, that it is as if they might be blinded by the lightning. Every time one lightning happens, the lightning here could be any benefit from the, from the Quran, any type of commandment, any type of amr or, or, or nahi. When they get it, they might try to uh, take advantage for a period of time. So Allah says the example given, he's blinded by the darkness. He doesn't have any light. When the lightning strikes, you know, it gives us a millisecond of light, right? So, كُلَّمَا أَضَاءَ لَهُمْ مَشَوْ فِيهِ well, Every time lightning strikes, they walk a few steps because they've seen the surrounding and then they stop. The point here, the scholar said, this version of hypocrite, this is the hypocrite who's not like category one. This is the one who might have some iman. He does sometimes do something. He does sometimes execute Allah's commandments, but then خلاص, his soul gets the better of him, his ego gets the better of him, he just stops in the darkness, he doesn't do anything. فَإِذَا أَظْلَمَ عَلَيْهِمْ قَامُوا Once it becomes dark, he just uh, stays there. وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَذَهَبَ بِسَمْعِهِمْ That if Allah wanted, he could have taken away their eyes and hearing, just like he did for category number one. So these are two separate categories. The first category, we call him the pure hypocrite, who's made up his mind to be a hypocrite. And this version of hypocrisy is very rare uh, in our times, in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, and at times of strength of Islam. Hypocrites become strong when Islam is strong. Because that's when they like to be hypocrites. When there's political reasons to be a Muslim. So there's going to be a lot of hypocrites. And when Islam is weak, when Islam is persecuted, hypocrites also leave Islam. Right? So in Mecca, there were no hypocrites. Here in America, it's really rare, difficult to envision somebody who's a hypocrite because it's difficult to be a Muslim in modern America. But the second category, brothers and sisters, every one of us should be scared of. The second category are those who, in and out, they believe and then they doubt. They are good and then they leave in and out. This is the second category. And Allah Azza wa Jal describes them that the cloud comes and they only see the negatives. They don't look at the positives. And they're so scared of everything that they cannot take advantage of the good. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them as being useless, terrified. Every time uh, lightning strikes, they take a few steps forward. I.e., once in a while they'll do some good, they'll benefit from the Qur'an. But otherwise they do not appreciate the beauty in the Qur'an. They do not appreciate the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in these simple uh, beginnings of Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala categorizes mankind. We want to be in the first category. The first category are described as those who believe and do good. We have to have iman and amal together to be Muslims. Insha'Allah ta'ala we will continue talking more and more about each uh, passage and section uh, as we read. Wajazakumullahu khair.